In Climate Watch, the climate crisis has sparked innovative new technologies aimed at reversing the human-caused warming of the planet. But some of these methods are controversial, and the climate community is split on how to move forward. For more, I'm joined by CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Biardelli. Jeff, let's start with the basics. What is geoengineering, and how far along is the science? So I find this fascinating because it's essentially man-made manipulation of the climate. And obviously it's very controversial. So it's essentially us engineering solutions to the climate. Like behind me, that is direct air capture. We're going to be talking about that. We're also going to be talking about solar radiation management, which is dimming of the sun. All of these things are somewhat new, or at least uh, they need a lot more research to really get better and become robust. Uh, but they do generate a ton of controversy. Let's get into the specifics. We'll start off by discussing carbon capture. Tell us how it works and why are some members of the climate community so skeptical of it? So there are a couple of different types of carbon capture. The first one, most common one, is when you're making products, industries making products or making electricity, power plants, as the, those fossil fuels are being burned, what happens is, is a lot of that carbon dioxide is then sucked up before it gets released into the atmosphere. So that's one type of carbon capture. The other kind is right behind me. It's literally sucking carbon dioxide right out of the atmosphere, which is a tougher process. This one is more, more in its uh, infancy. But just to give you an idea, uh, you know, we can only extract about a thousand times less carbon dioxide than we're putting out into the atmosphere right now. So this right now is, is not scaled by any means. It's not ready for a prime time, but the hope is that at some point it will be. So maybe one tool, but not necessarily the tool. Um, let's uh, let's right. talk about solar geoengineering. It's a technology that's really still in its conceptual phase, as I understand it. So. Tell us how it would work and, uh, and how effective it might be. So you can kind of see it behind me. What you do is you fly planes into the stratosphere, about 60,000 feet into the atmosphere, and you just spray aerosols and it blocks out, it dims the sun, enough of the sun to perhaps reduce temperatures by around a degree Fahrenheit. Of course, you wouldn't want to do too much of that. It's very simple. It's very inexpensive. It may only cost a few billion dollars a year. And the reason why we know it works is because about 30 years ago, Mount Pinatubo, and any time uh, we have a really big volcanic eruption, it shoots all those aerosols uh, into the stratosphere that dims the sun, and we measure a temperature that usually goes down from Pinatubo is about a one degree uh, temperature drop over the course of one to two years or so. So we know it's effective, but because it's so inexpensive, it really freaks a lot of scientists out because it can be done unilaterally. It could be done by a small nation. It could be done by a really, really rich person. And we don't know what the side effects are. There hasn't been much research at all yet into this, and certainly there needs to be a lot more of it. But a lot of scientists and a lot of uh, people in the climate community don't even want to go that route because they're afraid if we do this or the carbon capture that it may delay our transition over from fossil fuels. It may kind of kick the can down the road and allow us to use fossil fuels for a longer period of time when the other solutions like renewable energy, you know, solar, wind, uh, and nuclear, uh, hydro, all those things are ready and raring to go and they're moving very quickly. So uh, most folks in the climate community don't love it because it could be a distraction. Oh, and by the way, when it comes to solar geoengineering, so blocking the sun out, if you ever stopped, let's say you did it for 30 years and then you stopped, all of a sudden, almost instantaneously, all that warming that you would see over that time, uh, that would occur almost instantaneously and that could be catastrophic. So. Uh, there are a lot of concerns Whoa. with this. This is kind of a don't do it until you, you know, it, break glass in case of emergency kind of situation. That's so interesting, Jeff, because, you know, when you're first describing it, it sounds like, oh, th well, there's the answer, <laughs> right? Like, let's, too much uh, solar radiation, it's easy right? To do. Let's, let, let's just fix it by, uh, by repairing almost the holes in our ozone layer. Um, uh, it, what you're saying, though, is that, uh, that if we were ever to stop, that immediately all uh, the cumulative effect, uh, am I understanding you correctly, the cumulative effect of what we've mm -hmm. blocked would... Uh, would immediately come and radiate down on the earth? 
It's true if we hadn't already taken out the carbon dioxide. So remember, this doesn't take out the carbon dioxide right here. So the carbon dioxide is just building up that whole time. That's why people are afraid to employ this because if you do this, maybe you don't do as much of the carbon capture or maybe you just keep burning fossil fuels. 30 years later, you have a lot more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and then all of a sudden, you know, you've been artificially reducing temperatures, all of a sudden, bang, those temperatures go way up and now you're dealing with a real catastrophe because everything has to adapt that much faster. So uh, it's precarious. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. I always say that, but it's important to remember. It's a real interesting concept. You're gonna be hearing a lot more about it in the future. Hopefully this is something we don't ever have to do, but in case of an emergency, we could actually reduce uh, atmospheric temperatures by a degree and perhaps even more if we really needed to. I can see why it's so controversial, but I can also see why it's potentially so exciting. Jeff, thank you. You're welcome.